Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I want to show you something awesome uh, at least I want to start by something awesome and that's right behind me over here I have this good old trusty Lenovo X3650 model 1 running and it's connected to the top of these boxes up here which is 24 600 gigabyte drives and if we go over here we can actually see that oh, that that server sees those drives because on the back of this server the Lenovo X3650 it actually has an external SAS port which um, not many servers has but this older server actually has it and it's in all the models that they have so right now I have this old server connected to 14.4 terabytes of 600 gigabytes SAS drives really powerful drives and I am gonna delete all of these because they are well they are configured for the for the net up sand here and I want to make them so that a regular server can use them so we're gonna jump the first disk um, and we're gonna connect keyboard and mouse because that is apparently not working okay the mouse and keyboard uh, were okay it was just in that view I was not able to move it down because the only one that was really active was the top one and the top one is a 300 gigabyte hard drive that is in the server itself in one of the bays but all these drives uh, are NetApp drives and there are 600 gigabytes the, the problem is that they're red and if I press one it will um, complain and then it will tell me that the RAID adapter has detected some drives that are currently not supported the unsupported drive will not be available for any operation such as create array, initialization or safe arrays and that more or less tells me that I am not able to do anything with these drives not even um, there is also a disk utility out here it would have been awesome if that disk utility would be able to do something with these drives I have to wait a little bit takes a while when there's this many drives see there is all the drives the 300 gigabyte drive is up here and there is these drives but they don't really have any numbers here and if we do something it just tells us that this is not a supported drive could try and see what yeah the top one we can crash if we would want it to do that but these other drives we can't touch them that's because these drives has been formatted in a specific way for the NetApp and it's something about that a normal drive uh, the sector size of the format is 512 bytes and these NetApp drives has been formatted for 520 bytes instead which means that they are not compatible with the RAID controller so course you go and you search up the internet to uh, find a solution for that and the solution is to go in and and run a Linux distribution uh, send OS 6 point something and there is a couple of commands in there my big issue is that I'm not sure that these drives are gonna show up if the rate controller will forward these drives to the operating system when they are in an unsupported mode but I'm willing to give that a try so I went ahead and I um, downloaded a bootable USB a live CD and put it on this USB and I'm gonna test if, if that will boot and hopefully I'll be able to see the drives if, I, if I'm able to see the drives I will be able to reformat them as 512 bytes per sector okay the USB stick is working so far as it is actually booting the rather old x3650 model 1 it only has USB 1 ports so it takes quite a bit for the server to boot but 
Well, it will get there eventually. So not being any kind of a ninja on this kind of stuff, I have my little micro computer here where I cheated and I found um, an article on how to do this. And I'm gonna try and see if I can make this work. So I think the first thing we have to do is download some kind of a package. So the command should be Okay, and we have some problems here with that one is wrong. So we'll probably have the wrong keyboard here. Okay, I think that's it. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Nothing. Maybe it's doing something in the background. Who would know? Maybe I don't need the first one. That one. Yeah, then it did something. Oh, I need to become rude to do this. Apparently I have to type that in again. Oh, this is not my strong side. Okay, we have that again. And probably that uh, bracket or what you call that means that I needed to be root and I should just have known that. There, could not res Yeah, probably need to put in a network connection. That's probably it. Okay, now with the network connected, let's try that again. After mirror, okay, it's it's doing something. Loading plugin fastest mirror refresh packet security determining fastest. There it did something. And it installed that package thing. Maybe? Yeah, it's still doing stuff. Ha! As if I don't do Linux. <laughs> A total download. Is this okay? Uh, probably. Uh, why does it ask me things like this? I have no reason not to think that this is okay. So it updated something and now it's back to uh, where we were. So I need to check with my manual over here. So we did that part. Now we need to do this SG underscore scan I. Let's, let's see what that does. Okay, I typed that in at the bottom here. Oh, and it sees all the drives. Awesome. So maybe this will work. That would be cool. And that's also what it says here. That part here. Now you should format. Okay, so I just read ahead and it seems that I have to run the format command on each of the 24 drives. Each of them is kind of in its own little folder. Div SG 16, 15, 14, blah, blah. 27 um, Let's see the top one. What would that be? It starts There is the DVD drive. There is the flash drive and then SG2 Seems to be the first NetApp. So SG2 would be the first drive that I have to format and there it stops at SG27 does that add up? I'm not sure, but maybe it jumps somewhere. Let's do that. There is nothing to lose, all to gain. So we're gonna type in what the very nice manual here says and uh, try that out. And I'll do that. I give up. I have to install the Danish keyboard. Um, is it? English keyboard. This is set up to English and on a Danish keyboard. Um, it's very hard to find anything at all, so we're gonna add that and we're gonna default it and hope that works. It did not help. Maybe I have to exit the console and go in there again. In a text document, it works, so probably if I go in there again, it will work. Do you wanna save this? No, no, you can close. Need to find something for the mouse, that's not good. Okay, this is how I think it looks on, their, on this one. The line is right here. Format, size, twice. I have no idea, let's try and see what happens. Will be formatted in 10 seconds and will be destroyed. Okay, so it's apparently working. Formatting has started. I wonder if we can see it right blinking. 
we have all the drives here I would have guessed that it would be this one uh, but I'm not sure the top 24 drives are the 600 gigabytes the bottom 24 drives are the 2 terabytes and the 2 terabytes they're all okay so in the meanwhile it has completed so I guess I'll just um, do the next one and the next one and the next one three and it does say here that the block size is right now 520 so uh, and it did also say that to the other one so I'll do this 24 times and be right back or um, it might take a little bit okay 24 formats later uh, I found out that the SG26 is the live CD which uh, it was not able to format and number 27 was the enclosure itself which it did not format either so now I'm gonna try and reboot the server uh, without the send OS I have the USB stick here that is uh, where the send OS live CD is in the meanwhile while I was formatting I just tweeted out this so if you haven't joined me over at Twitter I think that would be an awesome idea for you to do right now while we are booting this server so I'll do that the server has uh, I've shut it down but I think we should just have a little look at the cables back here this is the X3650 model 1 it comes with a built-in rate controller on the system board this rate controller has been expanded with a cache controller with a battery but the server all the models comes with an external SAS connector right there which is really awesome you uh, plug in one of these connectors uh, kind of a short one that goes in there just plug that back in and it says click that goes down into the storage unit uh, it goes into this connector right there but the cable is different in the other end this is the cable that went into the server or the plug that went into the server but at the storage end it's another connector like this one uh, so you need one of these cables and I just did a kind of a Amazon search and this cable is about 40 45 dollars for one of those but when you do that you can actually connect one storage unit to the next storage unit each of these are double like this looks like to be two storage units but it's actually just one storage unit and you can connect them uh, in series so i have the storage unit beneath here and i can plug that up into the top one put it in there so they are kind of in serial so the connector goes from the server into the first storage unit and then I connect the first storage unit with the second storage unit uh, these storage units are for redundant so they have two controllers in each of the storage units I have unplugged the second controller in each of them it's uh, just hanging there for not have the airflow go that way around right now I'm just playing with this one so I'm not gonna plug in this cable for the other one yet uh, this cable for the other one is special in the way that it has two of these long connectors and this is an QSFP connector and it's a 40 gigabit base something a very nice short cable here and we're gonna see if that works along the way but first I want the server to actually be able to manage the drives so we're not gonna mess with that yet so but I'm gonna turn it on again and see if, if it can use the drives now during the boot of this server it comes up here and says that you have to press ctrl a for the IBM server RAID configuration utility and I just did that and when you do that it says down here that the IBM server RAID configuration utility will be invoked after initialization and right now it's booting the controller kernel uh, with this many drives it tends to take a while but in a little bit it will pop up and tell me that it has found something I did also pop back in the, the first drive here so that it will find something and it just came up here found some of the stuff that we are looking for tells me a lot of stuff here and it's it's complaining that it's missing whatever it had before so we're gonna try and 
Okay, it said that some of the drive was not responding. That doesn't sound too good. It's going to be interesting to see what it comes up with. Okay, it did not come up the first time, so I have I shut everything down, the server and the disk array, and turned it on again. And this time it looks more promising. So let's see if we see anything. Array configuration, initialized drives. It does not see the array at all. That's unfortunate. So there is nothing here on a, under initializing drives but i did find something if i go out here and into disk utility it makes errors so let's uh, do all these errors here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fifteen on the first page oh. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Hmm, I might have miscounted. Here on the first page, I'm actually now able to format the drive. So I think we'll try that. It says that it will be formatted and I'll lose everything. I'm fine with that. And yes, I'm sure that will probably take forever and ever. So, um, We'll be back when forever and ever is over. Okay, some two, three hours later, it's actually formatted complete. So let's um, try that. Press escape. Let's see if um, this is show up here. Still no drive. Okay. After rescanning drives, I actually found that it does show up in here now. So now I should be able to to select the drive over here and do something with it. Two or three hours. I didn't time this, but times 24 drives. Actually, there's only 23 left now. But who this is gonna take forever? But I can now do something with. Oh, yes. Fine. Initializing the drive one of one. It's initialized. Reiterate. And it's now available as something I can select there. I'll try and do the next one. See if we can make an array out of two of them. Okay, it has completed the low level format of the second drive. And it's now pitch black outside. So um, I timed it this time and it takes just under uh, two hours. Um, so let's um, enter that. Escape and let's do a rescan drives. Okay, and let's go initialize. And we have another one. So now we'll try and add these two. Enter and yes. Initializing one of two. Cool. Two of two. There. I will try and create an array. And we will insert our two disks. And we will just make a mirror. We'll call it first mirror. I'm so so inventive. Let's have There, let's see if it creates. Okay, manage array. We now have two arrays. I have the, the disk that was already in there, that is physical in the server. And I have my first mirror, which is array one, which is in the server. Awesome. So with uh, 22 drives to go and each taking two hours to low level format, uh, quick calculation is that this will take another 44 hours to complete and I'm probably not able to do this in my sleep and I might not catch it every time it's just completed so um, I think we'll end the video here and instead of me naming this video an old server with 62 and a half terabytes of storage well we'll give it another title because this is taking way too long to complete in one video. That's kind of how you can take these uh, NetApp 
discs and make them into something that you can actually use in your system. If you ever get some discs like that that just doesn't show up, it might be because they are like partitioned differently. For the NetApp they were formatted with 520 bytes per sector and for a regular x86 system uh, they need to be formatted with 512 bytes per sector. So, um, well, I did get this up and running, so, so the next 14.4 terabytes of storage that is in those 24, 600 gigabytes SAS drives, really fast 15,000 RPM drives, well, they will be ready in a couple of days. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again, and have a really nice day. Bye-bye.